One of the things we typically need in a data warehouse, especially if we're working with cubes, is a, a time dimension that has dates in it. Typically we have an, an integer key, in this case a time key, that is with the actual um, formatting of a date like 2008-01-01 um, for no reason other than when we're looking at our data and our fact tables and, it, and it's keyed in this way it's it's just a lot easier to see what is what and sort things out and find date in certain ranges and so on. The rest of the time dimension is is attributes and metadata that we can use to slice data however we want to. So um, in a time dimension we'll typically see a lot of helpful strings like this that are, are pre-formatted to display. It just makes it really easy and nice for the data warehouse developers and the end users. But many times when we're creating this time dimension, you know, so we can create it from the data, um, but uh, sometimes that's not as reliable, it's time consuming, so very often we just want to plug in a standard time dimension like this one. But they can be really tedious to, to create, so this technique we're going to look at how to create this time dimension automatically and then just schedule it to maintain itself throughout time. This is going to use a few elements. Um, one is a timetable itself, so this dim timetable that I'm selecting here that has actual data. It's a physical table, so it is real, um, and we're going to populate that with a procedure, and that procedure is going to call a recursive CTE function, which I'll explain in a minute. The population of this is actually fairly straightforward, so if I look at what this procedure looks like, I created this procedure. It's called maintain dim time. It's pretty self-explanatory. And we're inserting into dim time all these columns. This is the, the source column, so let's just take all this stuff out and put it in there. The trick is what are we selecting that from? We're selecting it from a function, which many of you may not have done before. It's not uh, too common, but it's uh, uh, fairly straightforward. So we're selecting from this date uh, weekly, and there are a couple parameters. I should explain what they are. This is the start date passed to the function, so to tell it where to begin, and then the second parameter says how many days to go in the future. We might want a time dimension that goes in the future because we're forecasting or we have dates like you know promise dates in the future. Uh, so this just lets the this this generator know how far to go in the forward. So we might put 365 if we want to go one year in the future. And then the the limiter just says where the time key is not already in the timetable. So this is an auto maintaining kind of a table and then this option is necessary because func generates dim time weekly is actually a recursive function. So let's take a look at the function because that's the hard part so or at least the complex part. So this function is um, generating a dim time and it's beginning here and going forward a certain number of days. The function returns a table so here's sort of the mind-blowing magical kind of cool stuff is uh, instead of using a real table the function creates one in memory and then returns it to the procedure and the procedure can tell the difference it thinks it's just a table and inserts it into our dim time and the return of that is my CTE so you know very quickly what's a CTE? It's a common table expression the documentation in SQL Server is real clear about what that is so it's it's a temporary result set that is defined within the ex execution scope of in this case a select statement and you know it's very commonly used create a recursive query. That's exactly what we're doing. So a CTE is really just kind of a temporary table in memory. One thing that's cool about them is you can use them recursively. When we select down here, and we'll look at exactly what we're selecting, but we're going to select from the CTE, and you can kind of think of this as selecting Wednesday, and in addition to returning Wednesday, the CTE says, oh, by the way, Union All, let's select Thursday as well from the same function. So here's my CTE here. My CTE here, so this the CTE is going to select whatever date we're asking for at the moment plus tomorrow. And of course, when it comes back in and asks for Thursday, then Thursday is going to ask for Friday, and Friday is going to ask for Saturday, and that's your recursion. So it just keeps going and going and going until it gets to the end of where we've told it to go. So we, it is really important we tell it when to stop, otherwise it would just keep going forever, at least forever until it aired out, which it would eventually. Down at the bottom of the select statement, you see it's selecting from my CTE. And then again, recursive, my CT is re selecting the next date from itself until until it runs out of dates. Um, what is it selecting? Well, my CT actually just returns one column, and that column is called date value. And then all in here, we're using various date math to generate fields using that date value. So this one is generating the uh, quarter number. So this calendar quarter here is, is going to be 
count a, uh, the quarter number. This is Q1 dash and then 1 2 for 2012. It's just getting the last two digits and it's calling that calendar quarter string and you can you, you saw that in the table before. So we're pre-generating all this stuff so that you know if you can imagine if we didn't do this then all of our reports, queries, dashboards, everything would have to be doing this stuff over and over and over. So just putting it in the in the time dimension in the first place helps out a lot. So that's our function and I'm going to actually execute this to create this function. So this function needs to exist. So if I execute that, that's succeeded. And again, review, the procedure is the only thing that's going to call this function. So we're calling func dim time weekly starting at this date for zero days in the future. So this would just go until today. And then um, again, where time key is not already in the timetable. So we're only going to add as many rows as we need to. We're not going to truncate and reload this. We're just going to maintain it. So I'll go ahead and execute that. That'll create that, uh, that function. Okay, so here's our table. So our table is pretty straightforward. Uh, the time key, that's an int, and then all those are all the fields that we're inserting. So you kind of saw that. So we'll create the table. That's created. And then if we go back and look at what's in that table now, we just created it so there shouldn't be anything in it. Sure enough, there's not. And if I scroll down here, I can call the proc. So that procedure is going to populate the table. So if I execute that, it's added 1,471 1, rows. Now if I look at what's in the table, I should be able to see all those rows. Now I've got a lot more rows than I had. Um, beginning with 2008, January 1st, down to 2012, January 10th. That's fine. That's, that's the initial population. But imagine if uh, maybe this, this procedure hasn't been run in a couple of days. So I'm just going to delete a couple of days from the end and then verify that they're gone and you know, kind of just scroll to the bottom and yep, they're gone so now after the eighth is missing so if I run that again and run that proc now it's added two rows and uh, if I then look at that dim then those rows would be added. Now I didn't truncate anything so if I had referential integrity in my data warehouse I haven't, I haven't caused any problems I've just added two rows to the end of the table so maybe you know the weekend passed and you know I just reran it again. That's really nice but I don't want to do that every day so uh, what I really want to do is have a job that runs every day and does that automatically. So I created one here so in SQL agent I, I had already created a job. The steps, so uh, one is just call procedure and if I look at what call procedure does it just runs the same exact SQL that I ran before so exact DBO maintain dim time and it's running that uh, within the retail DW data database where that exists and the schedule on that, I just have a daily schedule, so I'm just going to run that every day at 1 in the morning. So now what I have is um, a perfectly good uh, time dimension. It's going to maintain itself. It just runs every day. It has all the attributes I want, and uh, and it's very uh, very easy easy to set up. So that's boilerplate, so I'll, I'll put the, the the code for the, the procedures and functions um, on the site with this lesson, so you can download it and try it yourself and that's generating a time dimension um, and maintaining automatically.